Uh, welcome, everybody. This is a live interview today conducted by United Realty of uh, Canada. Mr. Hunter Milbourne from Milbourne Group. Uh, is going to be our keynote speaker, and we are going to be talking about the state of pre-construction projects in this crisis of uh, 2020. Mm -hmm. the, uh, so again, Mr. Hunter Milbourne is the main speaker, and the main host conducting the interview today is going to be Pat Chapdan. And uh, supporting this interview and uh, uh, moral support is also Mr. Alex Hunchin. I'm going to talk a little bit about Mr. Hunter. Uh, Mr. Hunter Milbourne is the president and CEO of uh, Milbourne Real Estate. Uh, the Canadian Business Magazine recognizes Hunter Milbourne as the Dean of Condos. He has firmly established Milbourne Group as the dominant force in the Canadian condominium community. And uh, his high measure of his success is evident in the large volume of uh, the repeat business that has been secured. Um, a little bit about Mr. Pat Javdan. Mr. Pat Javdan is the broker of record of United Realty. He has 20 years of experience specialized in the pre-construction condos and residential market. And by design, he is the design engineer by profession working at uh, General Motors. And uh, we also have Dr. Alex Ahanchin, uh, General Manager of United Realtor, uh, United Realty of Canada. And Alex is a microbiologist and a doctor by profession for more than 25 years. And, 12, and out of that 12 years, in experience in real estate, specialized in commercial and uh, the residential market. The, uh, we are going to start uh, the, the interview very soon and all this information about the interview is going to be recorded on the webinar and it's going to be posted on the above website. And if you have any questions, uh, you know, about the projects uh, and the condos, you can also register those questions at urock365.com. So I'm going to give it uh, to Pat right now. Uh, Pat, so you can start the interview right now with Mr. Hunter Milbourne. Go ahead, Pat. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, thank you very much for your help. And thank you all people that are listening right now. Realtors and other people as well. Thank you so much. Thank you again, uh, Mr. Melbourne from Melbourne Group that accepted our uh, in invitation for this interview. Uh, Mr. Melbourne, welcome. And many people, many people are concerned, are worried, and they're confused. So uh, what is your view about the state of uh, Pre-construction condominium market at this point, at this point, and at this crisis. Well, thanks, Pat, and I'd like to thank Jerry for those uh, kind words of introduction to uh, myself and you and Alex. And uh, it's a, it's a wonderful thing that you uh, helped organize here. So, congratulations to you, and uh, welcome to everybody who's uh, who's listening. So, most of the uh, audience I probably know and uh, know of us. So, you know, we've been pre selling pre-construction condominiums in the GTA for almost 45 years. So we've seen many, many ups and downs. Um, we've seen, uh, you know, the great recession of 2007. We've seen 9-11. Um, the one thing we do know is that, you know, whenever there's a crisis, the crisis always ends and things come back to normal. But I think that it's quite safe to say that, you know, we are in a very strange and unfamiliar and unprecedented territory right now because, you know, we had SARS, that was a serious thing. Um, and hopefully it prepared us for a little bit of this COVID-19 issues. But, you know, we've never really experienced anything like this. It's an unprecedented condition. And, um, you know, we're really just feeling our way, many of us. Uh, so, uh, how, uh, I lost, uh, Jerry, I lost uh, Mr. Benbourne. Uh No, that's fine. You can talk. Okay, sure. Uh, Mr. Merbon, uh, how long do you think this uh, problem will last? I mean, problem, especially in pre-construction condominium right now. Is uh, people are buying right now? Or are they are they are waiting? 
Uh, yeah, we're we're right in the middle of uh, um, a launch right now uh, with Lantera, and it's called Notting Hill, which is a project at uh, Kipling and Eglinton. So it's a transit stop. Uh, multi-phase master plan community called Notting Hill. She, for the Platinum Group, have experienced it had been three months ago or six months ago, but it's doing, I think, I think it's safe to say it's doing surprisingly well. And um, you know, there are people who still want to purchase, and we just have to change the way we do business. You know, we're basically doing everything remote because, I mean, I think that the, if you listen to most business people and most individuals, the overriding prerequisite in today's world is to stay safe. You know, we haven't heard words before like social distancing and flattening the curve and you know all of these are part of our everyday lexicon and language today so I think that you know the overriding prerequisite for us is our staff our customers our broker partners so you know the most important things are to stay safe stay at home um, you know do only what's necessary face to face if you do have to meet with somebody you know stay you know two three meters away and it's people are, are accepting it and used to it. And, um, you know, um, necessity is really grocery store shopping. So uh, people are getting used to that. So, so what we're doing now with this particular launch is that we're doing virtually everything by video, uh, by remote, by DocuSign. So nobody's coming to a sales office. Nobody's doing it. Everything is by email. Everything is by as remote. And it's actually doing quite well. Uh -huh. Is uh, is any any uh, condominium project has been affected, cancelled, or delayed, or will be cancelled, or will be delayed because of this situation? You know, I don't think so. I think that um, when you look at the life cycle of one of these large condominium projects, mm -hmm. you know, for the developer to purchase the land to get it approved. I mean, typically, when when we as brokers, listing agents, selling agents get involved the project's already had a two or three year life cycle of, of acquisition and approval process. So, so we come in and from the time we get involved, it's typically four to five years. You know, it's, it's six months of pre-sales, it's six months to get permits to start, it's three to four years of construction. So nobody knows how long this pandemic is gonna last before it gets uh, back to normal. But I think we do know that it will get back mm -hmm. to normal. The demand doesn't go away. Um, so whether it's 90 days or three months, six months, nine months, who, who knows how long it will be, but that as a delay in a project could affect the project's profitability. It could mm -hmm. affect, you know, the, the delivery dates, but there's no project that I know of right now <laughs> that's significantly delayed or certainly not canceled because uh -huh. of this. Great. Um, in general, um, I know real estate market in general is now is kind of stopped. Uh, kind of a stop. How do you see the future of uh, pre-construction in general? Well, you know, the most, I think in the long run, the future of pre-construction is, is very bright. I mean, you know, mm -hmm. the, the world deals in U.S. dollars. Right now, the Canadian dollar is trading at a big discount to the U.S. dollar. Mm -hmm. So when people come from other countries with U.S. dollars, they get a, they get a big discount. Um, if we look at the last recession, you know, when Lehman went out of business in 2008, um, you know, it wasn't a health related issue. It was more of an economic issue. Today, it's a health issue that's causing the economic issue. But in the first three quarters of 2008, uh, we sold about 16,000 pre-construction mm -hmm. condos. Not too many in the last quarter. Mm -hmm. In the first quarter of 2009, we didn't sell too much either. It was about a six month drought from October through December of 2008 and January through March of 2009. But both 2008 and 2009 ended up at about 16,000 sales in the total pre-construction volume, you know, not counting resales. And that was pretty close to the 10-year average uh, of between 2000 and 2010. So the market was affected in that there was about a six-month gap where there was a very significantly decreased volume, but uh, resale prices dropped a little bit but the pre-construction prices didn't really change very much because people just, they either bought or they didn't buy. Developers didn't, you know, reduce the prices or 
panic and, and things came back to normal within about six months, six, seven months. So that was the only uh, and most recent uh, similarity that we could, can look back to. You know, uh -huh. uh, you know many companies, uh, they're offering a special, you know, offers, you know, kind of a compelling offer that uh, encourage people to come and buy for investors, for buyers. And uh, I know some companies they're doing it right now. Uh, do you think the pre-construction condo project could offer such a uh, compelling offer? For example, let's say um, longer period of uh, deposit time or a smaller deposit time, or for example, let's say they said, okay, six months only pay 5,000, the rest pay it later. Any special offer they're thinking about it or they have it right now? Well, you know, typically in terms of uh, general incentives, I mean, there's always incentives when we start a project, but uh, there's no particularly different incentives today than there is or there was three months ago or six months ago. But I think you, need, you hit the nail on the head. I think what you'll find is that as projects come out, um, they'll be a little bit uh, more lenient with the deposit structure, you know, just to make it a little bit easier for people to project out into the future to, to purchase. But, you know, if you, if you really analyze the economics of these projects, by the time you figure out the developer's costs, you know, the land costs, the hard costs of construction, the soft costs of everything related, a profit requirement that's normal, you know, they really can't sell for less. Um, so they won't sell for less, but they'll, they'll, I think, play with the terms uh, where they can. You know, that you hit the nail on the head when you, when you hit on the deposits, because I think those are things, I mean, we had projects that were scheduled to open in April and May, and they may be deferred a little bit, um, but I know that when they do come back, they're gonna have uh, different deposit structures that'll be a little bit more stretched out. So I think what you'll see in the next couple of months is you'll see some projects that will launch, um, you know, you may not see a five or 600 unit building launch, but you may see 150 unit building launch because it's much easier to get to a pre-construction sales target of two thirds or 75%. Mm -hmm. So at this time, there is no special offer. At this time, there, there might be in a month or two, right? Uh, well, no, I think even today you'll see, I mean, the, the, the developers, I think on things that have come out, the, the deposits are, you know, a little bit uh, more stretched out than they might be otherwise, but it's not not significantly different. I mean, I think mm -hmm. if you really look at it, uh, if somebody wants a resale, if they are buying to to move up to something bigger, down to something smaller, somebody needs to lease. I mean, the resale market is much more need driven, whereas our pre-construction market is somewhat discretionary. But you know, there's always um, brokers that will have clients that want to purchase, and they they don't want to wait. They'll they, they know they can maybe get a better selection of unit. They can get easier access because the competition isn't quite as great. So, so uh, you know, we're selling um, at pretty much all our sites. And I, I, I know we're going to talk a little bit about which sites are, are selling well right now. Um, but I think that, you know, the main thing is, is the developer has the ability to extend some of those deposits, especially because of the long life cycle of these projects in some cases. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, I got uh, another question. Uh, you know, many, almost everybody now they're self-isolating, social distancing, we are staying at home. So what, what recommendation do you have for investor, buyers? And also what recommendation do you have for realtors? You know, realtors, realtors also confused. They don't know what to do, how to do their job right now, their home. So, so for both group, what do you recommend? Yeah, listen, I think that again, the overriding prerequisite is to stay healthy, right? And to take the government's advice. Definitely. If yeah. you look at what the federal government's done, the provincial governments and the municipal governments, what they've done in terms of, you know, kind of locking things down and, and encouraging people to stay at home. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've been pretty much at home now for about two and a half weeks yes. working out at home. But I mean, we have a full day where we're on a lot of uh, video conference calls, a lot of Zoom calls, Skype calls, conference calls. So we're just as busy as we always have been. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think one of the other uh, pieces of good news that's out there a little bit, I don't know whether it's widely known, but if you, we have a lot of friends in China, in Beijing and Shanghai. Mm -hmm. and, um, there was some reports that came out of there, both official, and I've talked to some of our friends and partners there. They were, you know, 60 to 90 days ahead of the curve for us. I mean, they started in December, right? They started getting cases. Mm -hmm. You know, China was very quick to act and, and 
sort of locking things down. So they peaked with a lot of cases uh, and, it, and it curved flattened. And, and so now they're, let's say, 60 to 90 days ahead of us in that cycle. Mm -hmm. But if you talk to people, I talked to a lady just a few nights ago who lives in Shanghai, and she said that things are not 100% back to normal, but pretty back to normal. You know, malls are reopening, restaurants are reopening, movie theaters, gyms. Um, you know, there's basically people around and, and they have very, very few new cases. If they do have a new case, it's usually somebody that's coming from somewhere else. So, you know, I think that's, that's a good uh, reason for us to be optimistic here and, and hope that all of the actions that the governments have taken, the federal and provincial municipal governments are going to, are going to work and to uh, stay apart. And we've been, uh, you know, getting a lot done. We uh, signed a listing agreement the other day with a new developer with a project in Hamilton. So, you know, we're, we're, I wouldn't say it's business as usual, it's mm -hmm. business as unusual, but it's mm -hmm. basically yes. still business, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. So uh, let's say somebody wants to buy a pre-construction unit right now. So what's the procedure? They go, they take a look at the floor plan right now, they fill out the worksheet, they send it. How this, pro, uh, this signing agreements, bringing a yeah. check, how does it work this? It's basically, we can do it 100% where, you know, in terms of what the what the what the selling broker might do to his client if they want to meet that that's up to them. But but we've got us we've got our system set up that uh, you know no one has to come to the sales office to sign anything to drop off checks or whatever. We can do it totally remote, totally by phone, totally by video. And um, like I said, this Notting Hill project is is the uh -huh. biggest example that we have right now. Um, we released 200 units. And, um, you know, in a normal world, they would have been sold probably in about uh, two weeks. And um, I think that, you know, we're probably going to get moved about three quarters, two thirds to three quarters of them and maybe two to four weeks. It'll be a little bit longer just because we have a little more cumbersome process because we send stuff out. It takes a little longer to get it back. But, uh, you know, there's definitely still demand. And... Uh, it's working, working as well as it can be expected to work. You know? mm -hmm. okay, great. Uh, do you have any specific uh, project right now that you recommend uh, investor or buyer should buy right now? Yeah, well, for, for many of those that know, I mean, um, you know, the, the GTA condo market over the last five years, uh, the slowest year was 2018, mm -hmm. where we sold about 22,000 units in the, in the whole GTA. And the busiest year was 2017, where we sold uh, about 36,000. You know, last year was about 28,000. So our firm at any one given time, we might have between 20 and 30 projects on the market. Um, and we've been selling in those last five to 10 years about, in some years, 18% and some years, 22%. So let's say an average of about 20% of the market. So about one out of five. So, you know, of the, of the 30 projects, 30 odd projects that we have on the market now, um, like I said, the one that's right in that launch mode right now is, is uh, Notting Hill. Mm -hmm. But the ones that are actually selling the best are, you know, we released a few months ago uh, 80 townhouses in Downsview uh -huh. for Mattamy. And the sales office has been closed. Um, and they're, um, you know, uh, doing business remote. Um, there's 40 stack townhouses that are in the 700,000 to 800,000 range and uh, 40 street towns that are in the sort of 850 to a million dollar range. And they, they've, been, they've been selling quite well. Uh, there's another project in Port Credit called Tanu that's doing well. Um, Lakeside, which is the big Greenland project, mm -hmm. you know, the one at Sherburn and Lakeshore. We've been writing good business there. Uh, River and Fifth, the broccolini one on um, River Street, um, which is about to start construction very soon. Uh, there's two boutique type projects in the beaches. Uh, one called Hartwood, which is at Queen and Woodbine. I mean, it's a fantastic neighborhood in the beaches. And uh, one called Poet for, um, um, you know, very good locations. Um, Stockyards, which is a Marlin Spring project uh, on St. Clair near Keel. And uh, Pemberton has one in Stouffville called Ninth and Main, which has been selling steadily. So those are the, probably the ones that are, are doing the best. And um, there's another Marlin Spring project that is supposed to open towards the end of April and around the 1st of May. It's a, a mid-sized project around 140 to 150 units. You know, the decision is still being made whether that will go as scheduled or whether it will be postponed a little bit. Mm -hmm. We can keep everybody up to date. I know that uh, 
you know, Pat, I'd like to congratulate Pat on his efforts tonight too, because, you. you know, when, when Pat called me and Pat and I've been friends for many years and I said, you know, you know, he told me what he was going to do. And I said, well, why are you going to, why do you want to do this? And he said, well, because it's, I think it's a good thing to do and it's informative. It helps, it helps other brokers understand. So I think that, you know, we're all self-motivated to do yes. well in our businesses, but I, I'd like to congratulate him. Thank for, you so much. Uh, you know, uh, having the uh, initiative and ability to communicate with everybody else and uh, help them in this uh, kind of difficult period, you know. Thank you so much. Uh, because we are, uh, I think we have, uh, Jerry, we have only a few minutes left, right? How many, how many minutes left? I think we have another 10 more minutes. So more I think minutes. we are good to go, yeah. Okay, yes. now, uh, Mr. Maribel, do you have any other uh, thoughts that you, you, you want to share with uh, buyers, investors, realtors uh, that, Give them motivation, you know, give them, uh, you know, power to, uh, you know, get out of their cocoon and they start, uh, you know, working not as usual, but in different way. Well, you know, one of the things that I started to do was I just started to follow up with a lot of people by phone. Okay. And, and I think that, um, you know, I think that it's, it's, it's difficult and dangerous to make predictions. Like if a client asks like, when is this going to be over? You know, right. it's, it's hard to predict, but I think that if you, if you take this extra time and, and say to yourself, look, I'm going to basically go through my database and, and call people for two reasons, one to reconnect business wise, but also personally, because, you know, I think that everyone would agree that business is important, but the single most important thing is to just stay healthy. Man, man. For sure. For sure. And I think that the way we need to stay healthy is to listen to what the governments are saying and really respect those. Um, but I notice, you know, walking on the street or in the grocery store, I mean, people, nobody gets offended, you know, when they back up away and, you know, try to stay two meters away from each other and, uh, you know, on those necessary trips to the store um, or whatever. So I think that, you know, the overriding prerequisite is, uh, is to stay healthy and just rely on technology, you know, because there's so many great tools that we have today that 25 years ago we didn't have in terms of the video conference and just what we're doing right now. Yeah, um, for sure. This is, this is a meeting that basically in some countries would be illegal. You know, I, <laughs> yes. I, I talked to a guy today and he said, you know, if 10 years ago you said that we would live in a country where working is illegal and pot is legal, that you, nobody would have believed you. Right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> well, because, you know, some jobs are yes. not yes. necessary services, so it's not... Yeah. Uh, kosher to work you know exactly. so I, I really think that the, the important message is to is to uh, you know keep that focus on the medium to long term and because we know that it's going to return to normal we just don't know when we have to stay focused in the meantime and and keep in touch with people and keep supporting people and 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 just follow those you know keep isolated uh, social distancing and uh, just you know don't shake hands wash it and you know, just those basic little things that all the things there's that book, Everything I Ever Need to Know I Learned in Kindergarten, right? Yeah, uh, exactly. So, you know, we have to maybe you know, go back to those basics. And, uh, and then I think a lot of the business we can do on the phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Um, if any question, I don't know, Jerry, is anybody send a chat question, is it a specific question for Mr. Merbo or no? Uh, no, no, nobody has sent any questions. Um... But you know, the other thing that we could do is between Pat, like if, if Pat has an email database of, of the people on the call or people that, you know, mm -hmm. we, could, we could send something out a couple of times a week just as an update to this, right? Right. And just say, look, you know, here, you know here's Notting Hill. Like right, on, right now, we don't know how many of those worksheets are going to turn into deals and we don't know how many of those deals are going to firm up. That we'll find out over the next one week to three weeks, right? So mm -hmm. I think those are going to be very important statistics because if I know those and communicate those, then that's gonna, if it's good results, then why wouldn't we share that news with people, right? Definitely, definitely. So I'm happy to, I'm happy to do that, or if you wanna do this again in two weeks or four weeks. Oh, perfect, 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 I appreciate that. Yeah. There Actually, is, one, yeah. more, there is yeah. one more question from, um, uh, from Ida, and she wants to know the, regarding deposits, how are you guys taking those deposits? Electronically, by scans of checks, can you please? Tell us a little bit about that. We're taking, most of them are still by check. Uh, if somebody wants to wire, they can, but most of them are by check, but they're basically, you know, dropped off at a concierge or at an office. So nobody really has to be in contact with anybody to drop them off, right? 
Can you guys scan the checks? Well, you can't deposit a scan check, but you can. You have to deposit an original. But I mean, basically, we have a system whereby you know nobody has to really come into contact with anybody to deliver a check, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I'm going to ask other people, uh, Alex, uh, if has question, or I think also we have Masoud with us. If you have any specific question regarding pre-construction condominium. Maybe next time, uh, Mr. Mayor, maybe next time we open this uh, chat. I don't know if it's open or not. We can ask people also live, they send their question. Yeah, if we have questions uh, in advance. Yeah, put it in a question yeah. or even live, you know, live when we are talking. So yeah. some people can, they, they send a, a question, then you can answer it or uh, like that. So yeah, what we what we have done, uh, Pat, just so that you know, and Mr. Hunter, you know, there is a website, urock365.com. So mm -hmm. any of the agents or brokers, if you have a question specific to pre-construction condos, go to the website and then it's there is a button where you click on the button for ask the question and then put in your question over there and we will get, respond back to you. Pat or Mr. Hunter or Alex will respond back to you. Perfect. Yeah. So I, I would like to take this opportunity to let uh, everybody knows that we're going to have these uh, webinars uh, three times per week, Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And every time we're going to announce the next topic, uh, topic what would be. So for Monday, we're going to uh, talk about how to generate leads, hot leads from home. This is especially designed for realtors at home so jerry is going to help us uh, to explain more about this lead generation again i'm going to thank you everybody who joined us today please keep uh, keep connected uh, and thank you very much mr hunter melbourne that was great and thank again thank you i appreciate that you accepted our invitation and you give us great uh, information hopefully we, ha we can have you again uh, for different occasion. I'd love to, and again, congratulations and thank, thank you, you so much for the initiative to set it up, Pat. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, and goodbye, everybody. See thank you Monday. You. Thank you.